In the last two videos, we focused on the discovery of two mysterious new gases. Phlogiston, discovered by Cavendish, which we now call hydrogen, and deflogisticated air, discovered by Priestley, which we now call oxygen. And the man who named those gases was Antoine Lavoisier. Not only did he weigh them, he found out how they combined and that they turned into water when they combined. He was able to do this for the very same reason that he got his head chopped off in 1794, and that is that he became rich as a tax collector under King Louis XVI. In those days in France, tax collectors were allowed to keep a portion of the taxes they collected, and the wealth he accumulated was used to buy the best measuring equipment that money could buy. Here's a picture of a scale that he had commissioned in 1776, and here's his lab, a lab that was unprecedented at the time. Not only did he have the best equipment money could buy, he also had a very interested wife, a wife who learned English so that she could translate Priestley's experiments so that Lavoisier could better understand what he had done. She also learned how to draw so she could make accurate pictures of his experimental setups. She was the one that made sure that his findings were all published after his death. Without his wife, much of his work may not have been made public. Now, one of the first experiments that Lavoisier accomplished that showed him that hydrogen and oxygen made water was an experiment in which he boiled water and forced it through an iron pipe that was embedded in hot coals. As the water boiled and turned into steam, which is just water gas, and forced out the other side, the amount that was collected at the end and cooled into water weighed less than the beginning water. But he discovered something that blew him away. Not only was water collected on the right-hand side of the experiment, but also Cavendish's phlogiston was collected. He knew it was phlogiston because it was flammable. Furthermore, when the pipe was dried and weighed, the iron pipe weighed more than the, at the beginning of the experiment. And if he took the additional weight of the iron pipe plus the additional weight of the new phlogiston that was collected at the end with the water, the combined weights weighed exactly the amount that was lost in the experiment when the water went through the pipe. He now believed that rust was really something that comes from water mixed with iron. And that's something that came from water he found out was oxygen. And he knew now that after hydrogen and oxygen were combined, they formed water and water could be split back up into the gases oxygen and hydrogen. Watch this really excellent dramatization on Antoine Lavoisier's experimentations. Monsieur, it is my great ambition to demonstrate that nature is a closed system. That in any transformation, no amount of matter, no mass, is ever lost and none is gained. Over here, please. This precise amount of water is heated to steam. This steam is brought into contact with a red-hot iron barrel embedded in the coals. From this end, we cool the steam. But interestingly, we collect less water than we started with. So clearly, we lose a certain amount of water. However, we also collect a gas. And the weight of the iron barrel increases. Now, when we combine these two increases, the new weight of the iron barrel and the gas we have collected, they are exactly equal to the weight of the lost water. Ah, but is it atmospheric air, Monsieur Lavoisier? No. No, because I am measuring it to the very last grain, I can see that it is lighter than the air around us. And moreover, it is flammable. Voila.
Water is made out of hydrogen and oxygen. So what he had done is get the oxygen to stick to the inside of a red-hot iron rifle barrel. He was basically just making rust, which is oxygen and iron, but he was making the rust really quickly. Now that left the hydrogen, what he called combustible air, and that was just floating around as a gas. No mass had been lost, it had merely been transformed. And now he wanted to transform it all back into water. This is only the beginning. In the next few months, I hope to demonstrate that I can recombine this combustible air with vital air and transform them both back into water. I will recreate exactly the same amount of water that was lost here in this process. It is my hope to complete the cycle, water into gas, into water, and not a drop lost. Well, Lavoisier actually went on to prove what he intended to, that water was comprised of hydrogen and oxygen. He even confirmed Cavendish's finding that there were two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen in water. In other words, if you have two liters of hydrogen and one liter of oxygen, and you react them together to form water, all of the gas will disappear, and water will form, and also the weight of the water would equal the weight of the original gases. Once batteries were perfected, largely as a result of Benjamin Franklin's experimentations and writings, strong batteries were used to actually split up water. The discovery in 1800 was that somehow, when chemicals bond, their bonding has something to do with electricity. So watch this experiment that was done in 1800s that proved Lavoisier was correct when he claimed that water was made of two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. Now here's a power supply in place of a battery used in 1800 with its positive terminal connected by a red wire to the left tube and its negative terminal connected by a black wire to the right tube. I've left air bubbles on top purposefully so you can see that the tubes are filled with water and not just empty. As I turn on the power supply, bubbles immediately start rising to the top of the tube and pushing water out of the bottom of the tube into the trough in which they're sitting, the water trough in which they're sitting. The bubbles are coming from steel bolts coated with platinum that on the left are connected to the positive wire and the right connected to the negative. After just 15 seconds, we can see that the negative terminal, the one on the right, produces twice as much gas as the positive terminal. And it's determined that the one on the left, the one with half as much gas, which is collected in this tube here, is oxygen. And we're going to test to show that it's oxygen by placing a glowing splint in it. Removing the stopper and placing the glowing splint into the collected gas proves that it's Priestley's deflagisticated air named oxygen by Lavoisier. The right-hand tube, when tested, was shown to be hydrogen because it's flammable. Watch this. Indeed, it exploded violently. And furthermore, if you look closely, the tube collected water as the hydrogen exploded. And Lavoisier correctly assumed that it's because the oxygen from the air mixed with the hydrogen in the tube. But Lavoisier did much more because he focused on the masses of elements before and after reactions and came up with the law of conservation of mass, which catapulted chemistry into the future and left alchemy in the dust.